Welcome to part two of super secret Plex features that you may or may not have already known about, but you will after this video. If you haven't seen part one, then you should probably start there. So clicky right here. If you're super smart and already figured everything out except for the one item that you're here for, I'm gonna put a menu somewhere on the top screen that you can kind of click ahead on. So have fun. Got a brand new microphone and like three seconds out of the package I broke the little clipper thingy so it's kind of shiny. Okay you should note that the topics covered today do require a Plex pass so you should get one of those because it's totally worth it. One nice little gem in Plex is the ability to sync optimized versions of your media to any device of your choosing. Now you might ask yourself why would you want to do that? I have a super awesome Plex media server and I host all of my media files why on earth would I want to put them on my iPad? Well, this feature comes in handy in a few situations, but most notably when you plan on not having internet access. So for example, if you're taking a road trip with your family and little Timmy just has to have his cartoons for the trip. Problem is, is you cheaped out on the iPad and all you have is Wi-Fi and there's absolutely no hotspot in sight. Obviously, you can't sync your entire library over to your iPad because it's also possible you cheaped out on the size of it too but you can plan out what he actually wants to watch on the trip and sync those files over specifically. This way, little Timmy can fire up his Power Ranger videos and learn three new ways to kick you in the face while you're driving. Anyway, to do this, go into Plex, select a library and a media file that you want to sync. For this example, I'm gonna use a TV show because it'll be smaller and it'll be quicker. Once found, on the left-hand side, you'll see a circle with a down arrow in it. Click it. Now, you'll see any device that you've previously used to access your media server pop up here. So pick the one you want to sync to and click it. To save space and time, I selected a low quality. Plex will automatically convert your media file to the best format that the device uses. All you have to do is pick the quality. Remember, the lower the quality, the smaller the file, but the more pixelated the video is going to be. So go ahead and click sync. After, if you want to, you can click watch the status of your sync here. The screen will actually show you the progress of the encoder and it'll show you the automatic upload too. Most of the time it will start automatically, but it's a good idea to bring up the Plex app on your device and make sure it's connected and working, because if it's not, it won't actually start uploading. Next up, rather than not having internet on your iPad, this time let's pretend you don't have internet on your server or your server is shut down. So let's say, for example, you want to take your road trip out of town, but you don't want to leave your computer running the entire time you're gone. Well, with Cloud Sync, you can move some of your files over to the cloud and stream to the, those files to your device. There's a nice long article about this feature that's on the Plex website, and it's definitely worth a read. But for now, just remember that this is only meant for a few files, and it cannot replace your whole server. The cloud only provides the files to be read. There's no transcoding or any fancy smancy stuff happening on top of that. Plex will make sure that the files are in optimal format, but it's not perfect, so test it out before you rely on it. I'll link to the article in the description. So let's approach the cloud in four steps. First, you actually have to set the drive up with Plex. To do this, you actually can't do it in your server screen. So we're going to hop over to a new tab. We're going to go to Plex.tv and sign in. Afterwards, click on your name on the top right of the page. Now on your account page, you'll see a little button called Cloud Sync. Click it. For this example, I'm gonna set up my Google Drive, which is free by clicking on the link. Log in if you have to, and then click Accept. After it's set up, you can edit the settings to manage how much space you wanna use or leave left if you want to later, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next step, which is syncing media to your new Cloud Drive. Go back over to your server and make sure that you refresh the page. It's really important. Then, find something you want to test it out with. Again, you might want to pick like a TV show episode just to save yourself a little bit of time. Once you've found one, click the same little circle icon with the down arrow in it, and you should see an option for Cloud Sync at the top of the list. Like you did with the Device Sync, go ahead and click that and select your quality. Now, you can watch the progress the same way you did last time. Or, you can go get some pizza rolls because you're hungry. Now that it's done, we come to step three, viewing the cloud content. So click on the home icon inside Plex and make sure you refresh your browser. It's super important. Once done, you should now see another list on the left. It's called Cloud Sync. 
Under it, you can click on the library name that you just added and test it out. It should look and feel just like a regular library, but, you know, cloudy. Step four. Okay, now this is a good one because if you actually don't know how to do this, you could have a hard time figuring it out. Deleting synced media off of your new cloud server. Now, I know what you're thinking. You could just load up your cloud drive, go to the file, hit the delete button, and you're all good to go. Well, if you do that, Plex will literally explode. I'm talking computer shrapnel will go flying everywhere, your house will burn down, trains will crash, I mean, chaos will just ensue. So don't do it. Instead, you should see a little heartbeat symbol thingy, it's like somewhere on the top right of the screen, it's called activity. Click on that and hit sync on the new page. If it's not already selected, click on cloud sync in the left hand menu. You should now see the video that you just uploaded. If you hover over it, then you'll see a little red X that pops up that you can click. Once you click on that red X, there you go. You've deleted your file. Everything's good. No explosions. Okay guys, I wanted to add something to the end of this video. I was going through and getting everything finalized and checking my work and, and making sure everything was, was good for this, but uh, you know, upon checking, I realized that something didn't work. And as far as I knew, it was supposed to work. And so I really wanted to just touch base on this and let everybody know that I am aware now of this bug and I wanted to let you know what that bug is and where you might encounter it. So with the Plex Cloud Sync, I found out that with certain cloud providers, um, specifically it seems to work least with Google, um, with certain cr cloud providers, it won't actually delete individual media uh, when you go through the path that I showed you. Uh, it's supposed to. Uh, I got in contact with you know, a few different people on the development forums, um, you know, the ninjas that they have on there, talked to a few people, been private messaging a couple people, and as far as I can tell, and what everybody can tell, the way that I showed you is the way to do it, and it's supposed to work, it just doesn't. It doesn't work all the time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. There's some other cloud providers that Plex has the option to connect to that it does work, you know, a little bit more consistently with, and it just seems that Google Drive is the one that it, it's, it works the least with. So if you follow the steps that I gave you, with normal operation, it's supposed to delete those individual files and it won't show up on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, if you have somebody other than Google, then you probably never notice anything because it'll just disappear and it'll delete it off the drive automatically. However, with my situation with Google, it seems that when I deleted that, it still stayed there. I went in and logged into the Google Drive and found that it was still on the drive alongside showing up in the Plex. Now the process and the steps that I took to try to uh, diagnose this and find a way around it just didn't really work for me. Um, I tried to sync another one to see if maybe it got caught somewhere in the sync and I just ended up with two files but only one link to it. So that didn't work. It doubled up the space. Uh, I was basically trying to avoid deleting it manually. Uh, so then I went in and I deleted it manually, and it was still there after I rescanned the library. Uh, on top of that, I deleted it manually, and then I added another separate video file to the cloud sync. All that did was just add that other link to that video file on top of the previous one. So now I had a two dead links and a working link, and that cloud sync never picked up that you know there was a change in uh, the files. So no matter what I did, deleting them manually, deleting them in the, you know, the proper way in sync, nothing would make them disappear. And everybody, it seems like, is a little stumped as far as why that, that is happening, uh, especially because it works for some people. So the only way to do this, if you use Google Cloud or possibly some other ones, if you're finding that you have the same bug, is to actually go into your drive settings, the one where you add the cloud, and deauthorize that drive. Now, this is kind of a pain in the rear because if you deauthorize that, there's no way to just go in there and automatically add them back again. You know, you can't deauthorize them and then reauthorize it to just refresh it and just, you know, have the ones that you uploaded show up magically. No, you actually have to delete everything, deauthorize the drive, go into to your Google Drive, delete all of those files, and then you can go back, resync the files that you want. 
which as you can imagine, unless you have just a static amount of drives or a static amount of media files that you want uploaded all the time, that's kind of a pain in the rear because you know, if you can't dynamically manage your media, it's kind of a pain. So uh, until that's fixed, I don't think I'm ever going to use it. Uh, not that I had a big use for it immediately anyways, but uh, I would probably steer clear unless you go into that knowing that you will have to deauthorize your entire drive before you can clear any of your sync files on your cloud. Um, so if you're taking a trip, taking a road trip, you know, you want to turn off your computer and you want access to very specific files and you're okay deleting all of those when you're done, then this might be a good situation for you to use it. If, however, you want to dynamically edit those and, and use that like you would just to kind of offset, you know, offset uh, some of the um, uh, CPU requirements to serve those files that are commonly used, then, I mean, you would have to check with a different cloud provider or just... I don't know. You just kind of have to deal with it, I guess. So uh, I just wanted to add that in there. I know it's not working. It is a bug as of, you know, January 24th, 2015. And I don't have any way to get around it. Uh, if I ever do find a way or realize that it gets fixed, I will post an update to this. But as of right now, that is the way it is. So. Okay, guys, I still have a few more things to dive into with Plex for super secret awesome features that you may or may not have already known about, but I'm going to save that for video number three. So if you don't want to miss it, please subscribe to the channel, and if you like this video, click like below. First, you have to set up a cloud so let's a pro let's approach let, let's a pooch let's a pooch i'm gonna let's a pooch you let's a pooch again you might want to pick a tv episode or something small just so you can get through this demo a little bit quicker god i f nose